Hey everybody, it's Thursday. That means it's time to break down the matchups. Don't miss all the news and notes. Guys, we're higher on. Guys, we're lower on. And of course, possibly the greatest boom boom kicker segment of the year. Don't miss it. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. It's football time. Oh, yeah. Excited to be with you Thursday, football time. Football o'clock coming soon. November 14th. We are the Fantasy Footballers, Andy, Mike, and Jason, back with you for yet another wonderful week of fantasy football. You can find us on Instagram, instagram.com slash fantasyfootballers, Twitter at the FFBallers, the website's the fantasyfootballers.com. .com. At the top of the show, I wanted to mention a couple of quick things before we get to some very heartfelt mm. apologies that are going to <sighs> take be, place. It's going to be tough. Yeah, we're going to each apologize to one player that we were just wrong about their talent. Okay, like a, a couple of years ago, I probably would have needed to do this for Marlon Mack, for example. Like I just didn't believe in the talent of Marlon Mack. But we're each going to do one for for 2019. Before we get there, I want to congratulate all of the Megla Bowl participants that are now in the playoffs. Woo-hoo! which is about 1,500 teams that made the playoffs of the 7,000 that entered, so the top three of every league. And uh, I want to give a shout-out to Ray Smith, who's been the Megalobal admin commish of 491 leagues. That's not easy. No. I could handle three. Two. Two. I was going to say, give me one. But he has been... And I'll uh, do a bad job with it. (laughs) Yeah. And so congratulations to everybody in there. Uh, we had a, a few bumps in the road this week with regards to waiver pickups where uh, basically playoff teams, you can't pick up waivers in uh, after week 10. Some teams accidentally got some waivers and they're being reversed and fixed. And we just did a new post at jointhefoot.com. So if you're in the Megalo Bowl, you want to know what's going on, head over to jointhefoot.com. Yeah, make sure you're checking in there. That's where we post all the updates. That's where we, you know, the, obviously that's the hub where everyone is. So that's where we posted about uh, rosters being locked and all that. Yeah, and we'll be reducing the uh, playoff teams by 50% every week. So the top scores go on, and then we'll have a Megalo Bowl champ, and that'll be pretty sweet. And then somebody asked, uh, quite a few people have asked us how the sleeper, uh, the sleeper Bowl that we participated in with Juju Smith-Schuster and uh, Nin- Ninja, and- Zach Efron, yeah. Tim the Tap Man, Carl Anthony Towns. Oh, I you, could go on. Have you seen Carl Anthony Towns lately, by the way? He's seven foot two, and he can cross you over like he's Tim Hardaway. It's ridiculous. The highlights coming in this year are insane. People want to know how the league's going, and I am directing our team of pretty, producers. Pretty, pretty good. <laughs> yes, we. It is going pretty good, Mike. <laughs> but I am. I'm directing Al Borland and Judge Giamatti to please tweet the full standings today. Uh, people want to know how it's going, but when I tweeted some stuff, like we're eight and two, we're tied for first, I think. That's correct. But they want to see how everybody else, because that was a really fun event doing that live draft. And if we manage to bring this home, uh, it's going to mean more money for St. Jude. That's right. So that's pretty exciting. All right. Anything else you guys want to touch on? We've got matchups today on the show. After our apologies, we've got starts of the week. This is going to be a great episode. It always is, Andy. I hope you apologize to me. I just feel like that. Oh, might, that it's might coming. Be coming. It's, get ready. It's coming. All right. Uh, who wants to kick it off? I do. Okay. <laughs> Andy. Oh, it's to me? I apologize for nothing. Oh! Okay. However, there is someone out there that, uh, look at my heart of hearts. I thought some bad things. DK Metcalf, you are not a one-trick pony. You are not just a guy who can run straight faster than everyone else because you're bigger and faster and stronger than everyone else. I remember watching you in training camp as beat reporters would put out a video saying, oh, DK, and I'd go, oof, 
DK. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, not a good cut. But you're getting it done. You're a rookie, and you look good on a whole route tree. And I think your future is bright. So I apologize for being wrong about my thoughts on your agility. <laughs> yeah, DK's been a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I mean, we got all a knew decent quarterback too. Yeah, that helps. We we all knew he was as as freakish as it gets in the landscape of NFL freak athletes. He's just a, a beast. But there were some there was some skepticism. You know, uh, you you really didn't see much in college. Wasn't even the leading receiver on his own team. Um, and and you know, there were questions about can he do more. Uh, can he do everything needed as an NFL uh, wide receiver, or is he just a great athlete? And I think he's going to get the job done and have a great career. Quick follow-up. Dynasty-wise, you know, the apology and everything, what you've seen this year, are you actually more excited about DK Metcalf long-term now? Yeah, I mean, I, I think DK Metcalf has a solid wide receiver two to wide receiver one career for the next, you know, seven years. All right. Mike, are you prepared? Yes. Is this going to be difficult for you? Uh, it will be. It may be difficult for the person <laughs> as well. Interesting. I need to talk about Amari Cooper. Oh, dear. Amari Cooper, and to be fair to this apology, because I'm nothing but fair. I, I agree. I questioned some things about you over this summer, but they were related to your consistency, never to your talent or ability, because we saw you be an incredible wide receiver in the NFL. And then Every we, other game. And then we, <laughs> then we saw you vanish into thin air as if you just didn't really care what was happening. To my credit, through the first six weeks, <laughs> I looked very correct <laughs> because about 50% of the time, fantasy players were happy with you. <laughs> However, things, things are turning the right direction. You have become more consistent as the year has gone on. I apologize to you, Amari Cooper. To my credit. <laughs> that was, that's definitely the best part of your apologies. Uh, but I was right for a little bit. <laughs> I apologize for... 50%. For something. <laughs> for just a little bit. Uh, yeah, Amari has been incredible for Dak, too. Do you... You know, they haven't come to a... New new terms on a new deal, but you expect him back in Dallas, do you not? I yes, yeah, yeah, I would. All right, they'll yeah. get the they'll get the band together. Yeah, it, it, what do you think about Randall Cobb having a nice week last week? Was that just <laughs> shocking to you? A, a I mean, little bit random. I mean, we'll talk about it in the matchups, but he he set up this week. All yeah, right, I mean, Patriots, Bills, Bears. Rams is going to be a, a, a rough stretch in a couple weeks. Just or will it? Well, we'll see. All right, Mike, you're going to enjoy mine. James Conner. Oh. I did question a lot about your ability and talent. And while I have to be honest, I'm not sure if I <laughs> like you because Jalen Samuels is so slow and Brooks James is so nothing and Benny Snell Benny Snell is so hurt but the truth is James you were dealt a rough hand this year no Big Ben he was dealt pocket twos pocket <laughs> two three <laughs> uh, but what's impressed me is that you are a really competent receiver out of the backfield you're a, despite missing games, a top 10 yards after the catch wide receiver. Mike is conducting oh, this apology you hear that heart? That heart. with his hands. <laughs> this is how heart players heart. You're catching 90% of passes, and you are so far and away better than the other players on that team. And because of that, you can overcome a defense first Mason Rudolph situation to become a very relevant player fantasy running back that's that's what the team said they say uh we're a defense first mason rudolph third type of team <laughs> that's, right. that's right that's their mentality <laughs> that's that that's the sign up when they go out of the locker room they all hit that on the way out at the top defense first mason rudolph third 
To get petty for a second, real, real petty. Mm. I can't stand Mason Rudolph's high white socks. <laughs> <laughs> that is real. Now, you did call it yourself out on this, but that is real, he's real petty. He's such a weird player because I don't want to like take any away, anything away from uh, – he's been able to execute. We talked about it yesterday. The offensive line has been amazing for him. I've never seen a player that looks worse on his bad plays. Like, he looks incompetent when he's bad. Not just like, oh, I made a little mistake. He looks like he's a, a, a complete green quarterback first play of his life. He's a Martian? Uh, yes, that's what I'm getting at. No, just... Just br- like a Trubisky. Just brand new. Ah, uh, I see. And then, but he's made great plays, and he's using his wide receivers in the winning game. So you got to give credit where credit is due. Shall we move on, the gentlemen? Pits- the Pittsburgh defense. <laughs> <laughs> Minka Fitzpatrick <laughs> is the best quarterback that they've ever had. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. All right, we I have to laugh at this because poor Al Borland, nobody's posted more jumping out of a window gifts in the last like seven days than Al Borland. I traded him George Kittle in one of our leagues right at the trade deadline for his stretch run. He paid up. He paid up, and and Kittle is torturing this man. <laughs> He's nodding in sadness, tears rolling down his face. George Kittle, yesterday afternoon, it was reported he's going to miss the game against the Cardinals. Which, he's out. Which I do expect him to, to miss. He's him to miss. going to miss the game. And then this morning, there was a clarification put out by Shanahan that he's not been formally ruled out, which simply means you as a fantasy owner, Al, and everyone out there with uh, an incredible George Kittle <clears throat> asset, are going to be tortured by the illustrious Q not allowing him to be moved into your IR spot was because that he's first, not been formally ruled out. Was that first report from Ross Dwelly? <laughs> <laughs> if I were Ross Dwelly, I might try to do that based on the Cardinals' tight end defense. He's just he's going with the Oprah secret. <laughs> he's just putting it out into the universe, letting it happen. Yes. So I right now no formal rule out, but don't expect George Kittle. Make your plans now. Make your free agent signings now. Well, like Matt Burita is not ruled out. As well, right? Uh, yeah. well, he's expected to miss one to two weeks. I know, so. but he's not ruled he, out. Yes. Except on the other side, he's probably going to end up being in the game because he always for a, for a quarter. I think he actually misses. To I give sure to give hope so. straightforward advice, Brita should miss a game or two. But you're right, nothing formal. That hurts the team if you can't put him into the IR spot. Couple of injury updates before we get into our matchups. Jacoby Brissett is expected to start Week 11. That's great news. So he he practiced in full yesterday. So it's just a matter of today. If there's no swelling and everything is good to go, then then he's a green light. Austin Hooper expected to be out a month. Ooh. Keep your eyes on Russell Gage over the next That's fair. handful of weeks. Snap counts, target share was already okay. Yeah, and now I, Austin Hooper's gone. That's a great point. I've been bringing up Calvin Ridley as a guy that I, I think is going to have a really nice stretch run here, and I and I do believe that. But you can't just go get Calvin Ridley, whereas Russell Gage, he's out there on your waivers. You can go scoop him up. And, and he, he sounds like an action star. Oh, dude, Russell Gage. And Vin Diesel in the new Sharknado. <laughs> <laughs> See, I feel like I feel he's in a revenge movie. In the new movie, Mediocre Slot Receiver. He was a gumshoe detective. <laughs> <laughs> Russell Gage. I'll, hot take right here. I'd rather have Russell Gage on my roster rest of the season than Larry Fitzgerald. So I don't think it's that hot. Okay. Well, I thought it was. <laughs> All right, Matt Burita, like I said, one to two weeks. Tyler Lockett is expected to be ready to play week 12 after the bye week. That's David, good. David Montgomery limited in practice. Gerald Everett, limited. Uh, Didi returned to practice Wednesday. How do you approach Jacksonville? I am very – I am extremely – I think they're a trap this week is, is my point. I think they're a trap against okay. Washington. Uh, you, trying, mean, you mean the Colts? Yeah, sorry, the Colts. Yeah, okay. I, I, with, <laughs> with Foles coming back. All right. With DD coming back, I just want to see it to believe it. Are you all in on, on Jacksonville? I am very excited for what could happen to Jacksonville because I do think Nick Foles the city? is a yes, uh is a better quarterback than Gardner Minshew. And 
the team has already been producing some really excellent fantasy options. And DJ Chark, Leonard Fournette, I'm excited to see them progress forward, but I'm definitely taking a wait-and-see approach. Okay. I'm a, it's a hopeful benching of D.D. Westbrook. I, you know, you'll still start D.J. Chark because you, you probably have to at this point, and, and Fournette, but with uh, I'm not playing Foles, I'm not playing D.D., but I am hopeful. I'm willing to play D.D. His, his target share and everything, it was safe. I get it was, it was Gardner, but... Like everything of Nick Foles that we know about him, I think I relying not not just on the preseason, but just the entire body of work of Nick Foles using. But this, week one coming back off the injury, week one of Nick Foles, you're, and against a pretty competent Colts defense, the yeah. injury is my concern. Mm -hmm. I've I've said this this week on the show. I'm I'm taking a stop calling your shot approach. If you're not a star, right? Like James Conner is a star fantasy running back. He's coming back. Off of the, uh, he goes right in my lineup. But Didi is a guy that he's going to have to prove it to me from here on out. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Tomorrow we'll have in and out on the show. We're gonna we're gonna tweak in and out a little bit. We're gonna, we're gonna focus that down to just the really big names that you need predictions on because we've got the game day alerts coming uh, every Sunday morning. A lot changes with Friday practice reports, Saturday, and then we've got Sunday live. Mike's live on Sunday morning with last-minute injury reports. So we'll, we'll get you analysis, updates on the biggest names tomorrow that people are doubting their availability. Uh, and so you can stay tuned for that. You guys ready for some forecasts? Mm -hmm. Fantasy Forecast. All right, we've got the Broncos, Texans, Jags, Patriots, Eagles, Redskins all coming back off the bye. Welcome back to your lineup. Packers, Giants, Seahawks, Titans on by this week. And if you're planning ahead, Cardinals, maybe Christian Kirk, Kyler Murray. You got the Chiefs. That's, Ooh, that's a big one. Big one. No Patrick Mahomes and company. Chargers and Vikings next week. Dalvin oh. Cook. That's a rough one. Yeah, there's a lot of very big fantasy players that will be missing week 12. And that could be very, very important for your fantasy team in terms of the playoff run. All right, let's get into our first matchup. The Cowboys at 5-4 and four take on the Detroit Lions. They're 3-5-1. and one. Cowboys are three-point favorites on the road here. It's a 51-and-a-half point over-under. Yes. That line, that over-under, certainly implies the return of Matthew Stafford. That has to. I mean, it's crazy because how I, dare you? <laughs> is that Driscoll? Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think you have to have Stafford here if you're going to hit that number. But Matt Patricia has really created a defense that says, well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. you can score all the time. Would that be Patricia or would that be Driscoll willing to give points up? Maybe you know, if Driscoll throws, it's a team effort. If he throws for a touchdown, it doesn't matter what team he goes. It still goes to the over under. That's true. No matter That's which team true. scores on his path. But Detroit's given up the fifth most fantasy points to quarterbacks over the last month. They are, as you said, completely vulnerable to all positions. One of the worst defenses uh, in terms of fantasy points allowed. Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, Omari Cooper. Those are your locked and loaded starts. When you look at question marks on the Dallas side, it's do I play Michael Gallup again? Do I play? take a shot on Randall Cobb in deep leagues, and am I willing to start the pedestrian man, Jason Witten? The, the pedestrian? Yes, the pedestrian. <laughs> because he is four more targets every game. They're not sexy and they're not special, but Jason Witten's out there. And, you know, <laughs> he's out there. Don't run. Walk. That's right. The pedestrian. The pedestrian. Yeah. In theaters this Friday. <laughs> Starring... Former Mon Monday Night Football <laughs> analyst, but does he leave that off his resume? <laughs> I don't. I don't. I, I put that on. They've I don't care how bad it. You know, Booger's going to have it on. Yeah. Booger's not there for, forever. There's no way Booger's hanging around. I wish there was a button on my remote for just Booger mute. Everything I hear, everything else, but when Booger talks, sorry. <laughs> Michael Gallup, is he a smash play this week uh, against the Lions? He should be. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think you could say he's a smash play. He's certainly a guy that, ha you know, can get it done. He had, a you know, a touchdown uh, last week. The last two weeks he's had a touchdown. 
and he's a talented receiver in a plus matchup. I like that. But it's it's one of those situations where he hasn't been great. He's really disappointed. After those first three weeks where he was uh, – the first three games, I should say, he, he missed uh, a couple weeks in there, he had – Everybody salivating at the potential of this one-two punch from Cooper and Gallup. That was from the Salt Lick. <laughs> and and uh, I don't get that. It's a horse. It's joke. a horse joke. Yeah, I got. Oh. I did take me a couple seconds. Oh, because Gallup. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm there. I don't. I'm not super familiar with the Salt Lick. My. I think. I think we've seen some interesting things from Gallup. He's actually in the category of receiver. That has a very high yards from scrimmage per touch. He's in the Evans, Metcalf, Diggs, Mike Williams category where I think we thought if Cooper went out, Gallup would become this PPR guy. Well, he's more of a big play guy, touchdown guy. Good game last week, but I think you can start him in this match. I think you can as and well. And Cooper helps him is kind of the sure. point of that story. Yeah, he's more of a Robin at this point in his career. Well, what's a little bit concerning is if you just look back at the recent games, I mean, you're doing some box score surfing here, but when he's having, when he had the great game against Minnesota, because game script dictated that the Cowboys needed to throw, you go back a couple weeks against the Giants, it was a blowout, was barely used. Yeah, he had the touchdown of against Philadelphia, a blowout was barely used. So that's that's the concern with Gallup. His his ceiling is incredible. Four for seventy six with a touchdown last week, but I think his floor is is very low. He sh he's he's volatile and should not be played as a safe wide receiver too. Would you feel more confidence if Stafford is indeed playing on the other side and yes, someone that can run up the score? Yes, yes, definitely. Stafford being in this game makes a huge difference because I don't think Driscoll is going to get it done enough against the, what what is a I think an above average Dallas defense. Um, so yeah, if, if Stafford is here, I like Gallup a lot more. All right. On the other side of the ball, Galladay and Jones, are they both being started for you at home, regardless of the quarterback situation? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, no, no, not regard. I take it back. Not regardless. I'll still play Kenny Galladay. I mean, you, even if it's Jeff Driscoll, but, but Marvin Jones, I mean, he's, he's pretty similar to, to uh, the, the way I feel about Michael Gallup, where you can play him as a two, but he's just he's not safe. He's not safe at all. And and the thing is, is Dallas's defense against wide receivers has has been great. I mean, they they really have not given up. They've given up one big week on the season. One big score. Shockingly, that was to Sam Darnold. Very unexpected. Um, outside of that, there's not been a lot of feasting here. Um, you know, by wide receivers against Dallas on the season. I wish we didn't have – I wish we were able to stay in the fire and flames that Matthew Stafford had been yeah. putting up because that was a wonderful three-game stretch. And, it, you know, it's just better for everybody. It's better for Hawkinson hopes. It's better for Marvin. Uh, any interest in the running back situation at all in – In Detroit? In Detroit. J.D. McKissick. You know, if Ty Johnson's out, we talked about maybe a uh, – flex dart throw yeah it, it's certainly possible he had 10 carries and seven targets this past week you, you I would expect those targets to continue at least to be in the four to five range but that was also a product of necessity where the game plan was to use Ty Johnson and McKissick now if they're planning to move forward that Johnson is not going to be there what does that split actually look like will McKissick get double digit carries I doubt it. So he's he's still an okay dart thrown PPR leagues. All right, we've got the Jags Colts matchup coming up next. Before that, I want to thank today's sponsor. We're talking about LinkedIn. Uh, they wanted me to mention my most rewarding job ever, and frankly, it's this. It's one. this one. <laughs> but uh, I also had the opportunity before this to work for a gaming company doing uh, Facebook and iOS games for many years. That was a very rewarding job. And a lot of you out there, you're looking for that next opportunity and you want it to be a rewarding job that you're passionate about, that you're excited about. LinkedIn has 20 million jobs available. Jobs like software engineer, project manager, uh, associate veterinarian. Didn't mm. know that existed. Robotics engineer. My son would love that. Ooh, I'd be great. Uh, 
<laughs> I'd be great. You just have a, a natural robot. Robotics. Activate. Yes. <laughs> Activate. <laughs> there are all kinds of open jobs on LinkedIn you can search for. People ready to help you uh, make the change that you're looking for. So find that job that you're uh, that's meant for you at LinkedIn.com slash jobs. That's LinkedIn.com slash jobs. And Footland, introducing the Capital One Walmart Rewards Card. Earn 5% back at Walmart Online. Games for the kids, headphones for dad, a laptop for mom. Doesn't matter. You get 5% back at Walmart Online. You'll also earn 2% at Walmart in-store, restaurants and travel, and 1% everywhere else. When you want all that, you need the Capital One Walmart Rewards Card. What's in your wallet? Terms and exclusions apply. Capital One NA. All right. Jacksonville. Going to Indianapolis, the the Jags are four and five. They get Nick Foles back. The Colts are five and four. They get Jacoby Brissett back. Ooh, game's only got a forty three and a half point over under. The Colts are two and a half point favorites. I lean the under, and I actually look at this matchup and not finding a lot of smash plays for me. Yeah, it, I I it's it's hard to disagree. I'll just start with the Jacksonville side. Like DJ Chark, I don't know how you possibly bench Chark at this point. I don't think you can bench Chark at all. I think you have to. But like, man, risky. Yeah, and just just not a top fifteen guy this week. Sure. Yeah, it, it does seem like the ceiling is capped. The Colts are strong against fantasy wide receivers. They are tenth, allowing just over twenty five points a game to the position. Uh, but like back to Didi. Like, I mean, you saw it once again. It was the preseason game, but Nick Foles went almost exclusively to him. Nine targets. He was injured. So let me ask, let me frame it this way. If Didi Westbrook were not coming off the injury. I would still wait a week. You would still be waiting? I would because we didn't we didn't see it manifest in, in, in the regular season yet with Foles. Foles is coming off the injury. Solid defense on the road. I, I would play Russell Gage over Didi. I would play wow. uh, a lot of those type of guys over Didi because he has not done anything to prove anything well, to me. Well, I, I think the Six argument... for 103? Yes, he had a game, but he, has, he hasn't had a game with Foles yet. And he, you're saying you'd play Chark over Westbrook, right? Yes. So then you're looking at a secondary option on a run-first team on the road with a low over-under. It's not a situation that I personally... Look, I have nothing against Didi, but I, I like opportunities for, you know other players a lot more than I do this week. Yeah, coming into the season, you know, we hadn't seen anything between DD and Nick Foles, and we were willing to play him week one for a, a really good option. But things have changed. I mean, D DJ Chark was not anything special coming into week one uh, to, to the fantasy community. We didn't see that breakout necessarily coming, and now I do worry that DD is going to be the two. So I want to see. I want to wait and see. Okay, DD Westbrook... Or Devontae Parker against Buffalo? I'll, I'll play Devontae Parker. Mm, that one... D.D. Westbrook, here's what you need from him. You, don't, you need a lot. He's the lowest in the NFL average depth of target. It's yes. 6.1 yards. Yeah, he's a PPR guy. So he has to be... He has to come back from injury and then tack on a pile of them. I don't know if he gets in the end zone. I just don't... I, I think the name is not worthy of the praise yet. It's just it's just right. my opinion. Sure. Um he's averaged 45 yards a game and he's talented, but is Chris Conley's there too? Chris Conley's been active and involved. He's and, been active. And Leonard Fournette has uh he's going to be the main man. Leonard Fournette yes. uh RB5 on the week, that's where we have him. Marlon Mack. What where, where are you at with Marlon Mack? Uh, it hasn't been smooth sailing big games lately. No, it hasn't been smooth sailing big games, but Mac has still been very good. I mean, you're you're talking about, you know, he's not a guy that's going to finish the week at running back 40. Andy's face is saying that he has not been good, you know. I'm just reading this line. I'm this was a shock to me. Since week 7, he's the RB 39. Wow, averaging ten fantasy points per game. Now, is that on I think a that point can't point be per true? Game? That can't be. No, true. No, I don't think that's. I'm gonna vet that because I think uh, when uh, let me see. And the, the thing about it is, it's just touchdowns. That's he has probably he has three rushing touchdowns, but you look back: seventy-four yards, eighty-nine, seventy-six with a touchdown. 
He's been perfectly fine. He's just not giving you burst games like you were hoping for. That can't be right. That can't be right. Uh, But you're right. Yeah, I mean, three touchdowns on the season. He had that monster week one that really defined where his placement is on the season-long totals. But I think that, you know, Jacksonville's a pretty competent defense, so I wouldn't expect a ceiling play here for Marlon Mack. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think he could have a really good game. I, I, I do. I don't. Jacksonville isn't a. I don't think you have to be just a, a the worst defense in the world to give up a good game. Um, they aren't a shutdown rush defense, and I think with Jacoby Brissett back, the Colts' offense running well. We don't expect T.Y. Hilton necessarily to be back, so. I think they're going to rely on Mac, and and I think he could have a fine game. How do you feel about Zach Pascal, who should be the one again? He did not come through last week, but mostly because Brian Hoyer did not come through against the Miami Dolphins. But now you have Jacoby Brissett. I don't have any confidence in Zach Pascal. All right, uh, Marlon Mack is the running back. Is still bad. The the these last four weeks from seven on, but he is the running back nineteen. Yeah, I, I would say if you look at the season and the expectations in week one, would you say that you are disappointed in Marlon Mack? He hasn't had a top 10 finish at all since week one? I mean, sure. He had a – he had a <laughs> 36, 51, 26, 30. But, I mean, he had a running back 11 and running back 12. So to say top 10, it seems – Accurate? It seems nitpicking a narrative. He's had, you know, multiple top – Running back one week. No, right? but I, if you say top twelve, it's not nitpicking a narrative. It's saying that, like you know, when you look at all the players that rank above him or, or staples of your team, you expect them to litter in some weeks that win you weeks. Sure, right? How do you, how do you feel about Leonard Fournette? Like Josh over, Jacobs, four straight. How about Leonard Fournette? The last four weeks, you have has he been? Yeah, I mean, because he's the running back seventeen, whereas Max the running back nineteen over these last four weeks. Yeah. So, so I mean, they are guys where, but he they, didn't he didn't really beat you up. Mac beat you up a little bit in the last six weeks. To be fair to Marlon Mack, the last two weeks he hasn't had his starting quarterback. Yeah, that's true. He's got him back, right? Yep. Um, and it's, he's going to be played on your team, so maybe we're wasting our breath. Uh, Pascal, Jason, do you have confidence in him? No. No. Okay. And uh, Devin Funches could be returning to practice. Do we, oh! have, do we even have the drop in here, Brooks? I don't know, but... I mean, Devin I mean, this S. is maybe on the first board. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, let's see. Let's I mean, see. It's been a long if, time man, since we've gotten I, we've got nothing. We've got nothing. In it's it. better that way. He's got to earn his way back yeah. out. I was uh-huh. trying to buy you time it, to there's find no, it. There's nothing I could do. <laughs> All right, Broncos, Vikings. Broncos are three and six. Vikings seven and three. Brandon Allen gets another opportunity. Kirk Cousins at home in this one, and they're ten and a half point favorites. It's a forty point five over under, and in case you're curious, that means the Broncos are not projected to score very many points in this one. We've talked a little bit about Philip Lindsay this week. Confidence, he's our RB nineteen on the week, whereas Dalvin Cook on the other side, the RB two, he's been a top five running back seven out of nine games, an absolute monster this season. Do you think Adam Thielen will be back this week? Because I do not. I do not either, but I think we we need more information as the week goes on to be sure about that. Did not practice on Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I wouldn't have necessarily expected him to practice on Wednesday. Today's practice is going to be – if he's a did not participate today, then I don't, I don't think he I plays. think you might. Speaking to Thielen alone, I guess it does depend on the practice reports, but if he didn't practice Wednesday – and we two weeks ago he played one play and left the field. And you play a Denver defense ranked third against the pass. Are you just hands off a Thielen? I mean, is there any reason that you're messing with that kind of risk in week eleven? I mean, the reason is the upside of a healthy Thielen, who is obviously a great fantasy option. But I think you're right. I think there is a David Johnson situation here where there's a lot of risk built into actually playing Thielen if he's active. All right. The uh, by the way, the Vikings are still leading the league in highest rush play percentage, so they've been able to win. They're seven and three. They've been able to carry out the the Mike Zimmer goal, run the football, and then we've still had some, uh, you know, a really efficient Kirk Cousins. Do you play Cousins at home in this game? Are you willing to 
mess around with that, or is he just kind of a... I'm not willing to play Cousins at home. I think that the Denver Broncos defense is starting to click with Vic Fangio. At the beginning of the year, they were supposed to be this great defense, and they were trash, and it was like, what is going on in Denver? And I think we got this inclination that Denver is a really easy opponent. They were losing a lot of games in general, and then fantasy-wise, a lot of you know huge running back games against Denver early on. But really, I think over the last few weeks, we've seen a defense that is playing very well, clicking, understanding the system, and... I don't think Kirk Cousins has been good enough to warrant playing in a non-plus matchup, and I view this as a non-plus matchup. Now, having said that, Jason, would you play Kirk Cousins or Phillip Rivers? Is it? Come on, man. <laughs> oh, fuck, man. Uh, so, Phillip Rivers, who I hate now. I didn't, but last week I made him my start of the week, and he looked – terrible he looked washed he looked awful is and was on my team any other adjectives you want to use for poor, just poor old phil thesaurus awful okay and all of them uh but i am playing him this week Ugh. oh you're back you're back on, i'm not back happy on the about it but he's playing against kansas city and that you know basically i had to come down to the this decision but you're doing that over carson Wentz. I am doing that over Carson Wentz, and I'm also – you could throw another name out there because it was really my only pivot. It was Kyle Allen. And I just didn't have the confidence in Ky – I know Atlanta, you know, you they, they could be beat. But I would rather go with a vet against the, in a high-scoring game against Kansas City than Kyle Allen. Can I add to uh, what you're saying and just say I, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this plays out? <laughs> It's and, a Monday night game. And one and of the reasons I'm enjoying it is Kyle Allen will already have played. Yeah. So and he, the thing is, is we're playing against each other. On Monday night, you have Mahomes, I have Phillip Rivers, so it's not going to go well for me. It'll be fun. Uh, speaking of Allens, we got Brandon Allen. Okay, we've got Brandon Allen. I, I don't mind playing Cortland Sutton. He feels like a very stable, you know, slightly better Tyler Boyd situation where you know he's going to get the majority of the target share. Yeah, over 25%. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind playing him at all. Jason, you're the highest on him this week at wide receiver 15. I think it makes sense. Phillip Rivers, we have him at running back 19, like I said. Royce Freeman. Phillip Lindsay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Phillip Rivers on the mind. Royce Freeman at RB30 on the week. It's tough to have confidence about either of those guys because scoring opportunities should be very limited in Minnesota. And then the Vikings defense just giving up 16 total points to running backs. Both of them seem like real hesitant. I'm stuck with them plays this week. Noah Fant. Yes. Noah Fant seems intriguing. Last two weeks, a 27% and 22% target share. Also known as the two weeks without Emmanuel Sanders. Exactly. And it, it changes things a lot, just like it did on the positive side for the 49ers. Is Noah Fant somebody that you are in your streaming consideration – this week, Mike? Yeah. Oh. All right. uh, sorry, Jason or Mike, either one. Oh, Jason's very excited to talk about Fant. He is definitely in the streaming consideration because what you look for in a streamer is someone with the opportunity, right? Who is actually involved in the game plan on the in a passing role? And there aren't many guys out there that are available on waivers that are as involved in the offense as Noah Fant is. The problem is he's really shown himself to be a rookie and not produce as much as you'd like on each target coming his way, and now the targets are worse. So uh, that's the downside. The upside is opportunity, but talent and opportunity are there. So I, I am willing to have him in consideration. That's not to say that there I'm, aren't I'm guys. I'm very curious about him. I You know, last week was the break, or the last game he played was the breakout. It, but the week, yeah, before the, he had, game. the week before he had nine targets. Right. So when you say the targets are worse, you mean that in the context of Brandon Allen's throwing them. Exactly. Which is, it's hard to call any target worse than a Joe Flacco target. Difficult, and but I've done also, it. He also saw a, a, a nice uptick in snaps throughout the middle of the season. He was basically playing on about 65%. Then once Sanders was gone, that jumped into the 80s. So it's, he is, you, you need to pay attention. The, it, it stinks to have to stream him against the Minnesota Vikings, not 
Not really because of the matchup against the Vikings at, and the tight end is terrible. They're 14th. But for for Brandon Allen, this should is going to be a really tough matchup. Much tougher than his debut against the Browns. Uh, on the other side, Kyle Rudolph actually – think you can stream him this week if no Adam Thielen yeah, if, if Adam Thielen is out I agree with you yeah four touchdowns over three weeks we'll talk about him a little bit later believe it or not uh the Texans Ravens Texans six and three Ravens seven and two this should be a really fun game two of the most dynamic um and it's, best fantasy quarterbacks the in the game it uh, is like the, the, these two guys are the future of the quarterback position I, I yes Patrick Mahomes is as well but Deshaun Watson and Lamar Jackson this is we are very lucky that they are matched up this year. One of the reasons Lamar Jackson has been so incredible for your fantasy team, sure, he's scored a ton of points, but it's the way he's done it. He was a discount in the draft, and he's been extremely consistent week to week. He's averaging 78 rushing yards a game. That might be the dictionary definition of consistency. If you put 78 on the board as the quarterback on average, you're just not going to end up at the bottom of the... Uh, no, you won't. The, you know... 20 he's not going to ever end up in that 20s range six top five quarterback performances uh just just for so people can understand how big that is for normal scoring which is you know dumb for quarterbacks but the 78 rushing yards a game that is an average of if you were to translate it to passing yards 200 passing yards a game baseline added to whatever he does that's that's what some quarterbacks finish a game with right yeah, that's absolutely right. And when you look at him and compare him to somebody that's been very good on the season, like Russell Wilson, well, Wilson's finished, you know, kind of out. He's had like five kind of duddy weeks, five monster weeks, but Lamar's giving it to you every week, as is Deshaun Watson for the most part, five top five QB performances. I'm super excited to see what happens here. You're playing both of those guys automatically. I want pieces in this game wherever I can find them, even – Wow, even, yeah, even Carlos? I I think I I even mean Carlos. That's not saying like I'm super excited and I I wish I can plug him in, but he's in that flex consideration where when I'm deciding between all these different flex options where there's reasons why they're flexible and there's plenty of reasons against them, which is pretty much all your flex decisions. Uh, one of my biggest tiebreakers is games that I think could go bananas. And this is a game uh, Vegas has it at 49 points. I think it hits the over because these two quarterbacks are just too good. 40, yeah, and 49 point over under Ravens, four and a half point home favorites. If you're a GM right now, which quarterback do you would you rather have for your franchise? Watson. Mm, Watson. It's easy to... Watson's a better passer, He's a better passer. Than, than Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is maybe a better weapon than Deshaun Watson. But I think going forward, longevity, long-term uh, quality of the quarterback play, you know, will people be able to figure out uh, over time? You know, Lamar Jackson is still – this is no. really his first year. Now, The answer for me is no. They won't be able to figure it out. They nope. didn't figure Vic out ever. Uh, I mean, you can't figure out extreme athleticism. Right. That's all my – I lean Lamar, but, but both I, are incredible – do you have any cons like? Do you have any concerns next year if Greg Roman leaves? Greg Roman, the offensive coordinator, he has to be up up at the top of head coach and candidates. If he will be offered jobs, I don't think so. Okay, I don't think I'm concerned about that. I think they've you know he's got a second year of establishing what he does, and he's going to improve Just and continue to like the, the the narrative of we like Lamar because Greg Roman's coming in because you saw what he did with Tyrod Tyrod. Got worse when Greg Roman left. The nice Kaepernick thing is had his best years with Greg Roman. No doubt. It's easy to trust good franchises. And coaches. It's, it, exactly. Harbaugh and that organization, they they brought Greg Roman in because yes. they knew what they were doing. And I, so I, I have trust in the organization. All right, Mike. Duke Johnson or Carlos Hyde, who would you rather flex in this game? Uh, half points, it's going to be Carlos Hyde. If it's full PPR... I might give the edge to Duke Johnson, who has had five targets three weeks in a row. Marquise Brown, we'll talk about him soon. Jason's the highest at wide receiver 19 right now. I think there's a lot of upside to him. Yes. 22% target share, seems healthy. Hopkins, he's in. Will Fuller should return, maybe in a limited capacity. Um, I'm personally hands off of Fuller and Stills. I agree. 
Darren Fells, Mark Andrews. Andrews is an auto start. Fells is the – he's in that category he's, of – He's an auto stream. Is he? He is for He's me. an auto stream. So, yes. basically, every week you can think about it. Yes. Yeah, and, uh, you know, going back to my belief of this game being able to be one where a ton of points are scored, if you, gotta, if you get into the game script where it's back and forth, that's a game where Darren Fells falls over for a touchdown. All right, Jets at two and seven take on the Redskins at one and eight. Redskins are one point favorites. Makes my comment earlier in the week that Washington was going to win the game seem a little less hot takey. <laughs> Dwayne Haskins will get the start uh, against Sam Darnold. I I believe that this is this is going to be a low scoring game. This is going to be – Vegas has it at 38-and-a-half. I'm not really excited. Pace of play-wise, the Redskins are going to slow the game down as much as possible. I heard a stat from J.J. Zacharyson that basically highlighted like pass attempts of quarterbacks facing the Redskins. It's like 22. That's what they average on the year. So you don't you, – you look at the Redskins as juicy matchup, but they don't – they slow the game down, and all of a sudden you look up as, you know, two minutes left in the third quarter, you're like where are my passing – points and leaning on Sam Darnold to break out on the road no on 22 pass attempts and be efficient Ooh. yeah this is a game that could end up finishing quickly because there's more running involved in a lower scoring game I mean you have two pretty bad defenses here but when you look at fantasy uh, points given up they're just middle of the pack and you go why are, why aren't they a great play and the reason is what you just said Andy is uh, the the game doesn't turn into any barn burner and there's no need that's why like you look at the Redskins defense the one place that they are really susceptible to in fantasy is running backs because the other team is up and they just keep running the ball yeah it's it, you know the running back situation in Washington is a bit of an enigma today or right now you have Adrian Peterson who was dealing with an ankle was limited with a toe Darius Geist returns Bill Callahan came out and said we've got a pretty good rotational system for Darius uh, Geis and Adrian Peterson. Uh, he says, we feel pretty confident Geis will see quite a bit of action this weekend. Mm. And then Peterson isn't worried about his workload. He said, Coach Gruden was here. He's no longer here, so kind of different scenario. Wow. Uh, and Chris Thompson is still out. Peterson. So where are you at with this situation? Bill Callahan is happy to hand over the football as often as possible, protect his rookie uh, quarterback. Yeah, they're they're going to try to have, you know, between these two backs, they're going to try to have 35 carries. I don't know that they'll be able to do that, but then what we've seen so far is game script doesn't matter. They're, they're going to keep running the ball even when they're down. So the issue is just the split between AP and Geis. If I had to start one, it would clearly be AP. I don't really love either option because th with it being a low scoring game and a split it's kind of like taking a wide receiver two for Lamar Jackson it's like okay Lamar's great but there's such low passing volume when you split up the stats between multiple players you look at target share and market share and all that you go I need all of it in order to have a good game so I'm, I'm kind of out on both running backs here I feel like Bill Callahan has been put in a tough position this week because the Jets' defense is giving it up to the wide receiver position. The last three weeks, if you look at our uh, stream finder tool, holy guacamole, the Jets are just giving up so many points to wide out. So you look at Terry McLaurin and you say, can he be opportunistic here? The Jets' defense allowing the seventh most passing yards in the NFL. So what does Dwayne Haskins look like in a – plus matchup for, for throwing the football, but with a coach that likes to run. I have no interest in playing Dwayne Haskins, but, yeah, I'm, I'm back in on Terry McLaurin this week. It's It's been a rough stretch, including the slop fest uh, and McLaurin – or uh, I'm sorry, uh, Haskins having to come in and looking like a deer in headlights, but he's had plenty of time now to prepare to be the starter. And it, maybe it's not a high volume for Terry McLaurin, the volume we would like, but I think he will be efficient enough that you're going to be happy. So in this game, head-to-head, -head, Jamison Crowder, who's been pretty good. Oh, revenge! 80 yards and a touchdown in each of his last two games. Jamison Crowder or Terry McLaurin in this one, Washington at home. Who do you prefer? Terry. Ooh. I 
it's that's tough because I think Jamison is is the safer play, as in he his opportunity to bust is lower. But I would prefer to have Terry. And then Robbie Anderson, Demarius Thomas. Hey, are you staying away? I'm staying if away possible? from Robbie. Demarius Thomas is he is a strange case because he's getting so many of the targets, a twenty percent target share, nine this past week, three, but then five for sixty three. I mean, he's been okay as a desperation play. All right, the Falcons at two and seven take on the Panthers in Carolina. Panthers five and a half point favorites. It's a forty nine and a half point over under. The aforementioned Kyle Allen, the new quarterback for the Carolina Panthers. Atlanta's given up six quarterback one performances this year. So a lot of fantasy owners wanting to know Allen or Rivers, Allen or Brady, Allen or Kyler this week. Also, (laughs) Allen or Rivers. That's another question people are asking. Also, Rivers versus Allen. When waivers were running, I decided it wasn't worth going and getting Kyle Allen, spending fab, dropping someone and as we've gotten closer looking at the matchup I go you thought you would have to spend fab to get Kyle Allen yeah I mean I he was picked up so I he was yeah I think so so I probably have to do that but I I I look at this matchup and I just think "Mm, Kyle Allen's probably gonna have a pretty good game last week was a strange one and so I look at Vegas and I say well what does Vegas think about the Atlanta resurgence on defense and they don't think it's legit when you have an implied point total 27 and a half for Carolina. They're at home. They're favored the high over under. So very impressive for Atlanta doing what they did against new Orleans. Still optimistic for Kyle Allen, uh, Allen or Matt Ryan. I mean, Matt Ryan on the road here, traditionally, you know, a 300 plus yard passer, every single game, having lost Sanu, having lost Hooper. I think yeah, but he still has Julio Jones and he's still Matt. He also Ryan. lost Devonta Freeman. I lean the Matt Ryan side. Or gain Brian Hill, depending on your Oof. perspective. You lean the Matt Ryan side. I think he's the safer play for sure. Kyle Allen has a wider range of outcomes. Brian Hill, love it. Yeah. Last week, tons of work in a game where I think Devonta Freeman still had over 30% of the snaps before he got hurt. Christian McCaffrey, let's not. Let's talk about him only to say you're great. You're great, yep. Christian. Keep it up, partner. Go get him. Go get him. DJ Moore. Love him this week. We're going to talk about him shortly. He has been just a target monster of late. Yeah, Who- over his last four games, he's got a 16-game pace of 160 targets. I like it. And so that the real equation here for Kyle Allen in this Carolina offense is that Atlanta does enough on the road that you know Matt Ryan can do enough with Russell Gage, Brian Hill, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley's been getting the snaps. He has not been producing for your team. And so are you kind of – are you trying to find another option this week? Have you just been locking Calvin Ridley in for two weeks? I am not trying to find a different option. I mean, I'd rather play Calvin Ridley over a waiver guy. Like the Demarius Thomas, who's interesting as a desperation play, I would still play Calvin over him. Calvin or Crowder? Crowder. Calvin or Terry? Terry. I guess you were Terry yeah. over Crowder. All right, and then Russell Gage brought him up as an interesting stash. He plays Tampa next week. So if, you know, he's one of those guys that if you put him at the bottom of your bench, even if you don't play him, and he has a big week, he's got a nice matchup coming up. Well, he's got a pretty solid matchup right now. I agree. But if you want to wait and see, Mike, not all of us want to just throw him in. All right. Some of us might have to. (laughs) But, But it won't surprise me if Russell Gage has a better game than Calvin Ridley. Let me put it that way. Sure. I mean, you you don't know where the targets are going to go. Obviously, I don't think that the Carolina Panthers are focusing in on Russell Gage as the guy to stop. Uh, Curtis Samuel this week, also a solid play. Everybody against Atlanta has been, for the most part, outside of last week, although last week you still had nice games for Michael Thomas, Jared Cook. Greg Olson, big game last week, 8 for 98 on 10 targets. He's definitely someone that you can – you know, you should be starting at tight end. Uh, he's almost to the point where you go, okay, he's if he's a must start. I don't think you have to start him. There's other guys that I might pivot to. But when you get 10 targets last week and you start to see him getting more involved with Kyle Allen, it, g- it gives you gives you hope that he can be consistent. 
unfortunately, one of the things that happens once you get up there in age, and I think Greg Olson's at the 34, 35 range, is we haven't we have lost some of that, you know, the guaranteed connection that we had with him and. Uh, you know, he had the nice game this past week, but it had been bad for uh, a, a pretty big run. You wonder that what the ceiling is, but you like the 100% of snaps. Yeah. On the other side, do you hold Austin Hooper? <sighs> if he's out four weeks, we're in week 11, 11, 12, 13, 14. You're yes. just saying I'm holding him for yeah. the championship and the semifinals. Yeah, I hold him. Really? 100%. You hold the number one tight end. You hold him through. And would you it, hold Travis Kelsey? Fair. It's that's fair. I mean, yes, yeah, you of would. Of course. And you got to view Hooper in that lens. In the uh, unfortunately, and I'm sorry to tell you this, fantasy owners, your odds are that you're probably playing. I don't know. I know a Fant this week, and then like a Jonu next week, and no, then no, and you're then playing you, Abercrombie next week. Oh, Hollister. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're probably rotating with frustration for four weeks. You will be so happy to have Austin Hooper coming back off of an MCL tweak. and He will be coming back. If he misses four weeks, he will be coming back against San Francisco on the road. Mm. So that's your semifinal, and you probably want to. And then you get Jacksonville in the championship. Wait and see, and then, oh, man. It would be really hard for me to bench Austin Hooper in week 15 to play Darren Fels. Right. If you're – Yes, you're not going to be able to pivot to Hunter Henry right now. So, yeah, you, you probably are going to play him against San Francisco. It's really just unfortunate. He, he's had a career year, obviously, leading the position in receptions. It's unfortunate he doesn't get to kind of but, finish that stat line out. But I guess that means if you're one of those teams that has a you, – you've got Hunter Henry and someone drops Austin Hooper – because You're not picking him up in that situation, are you? You're that, not competing for him. Right. I probably wouldn't at that point. All right. Let's do some starts. Starts of the week. All right, Mike, why don't you kick it off? At the quarterback position, Josh Allen, he gets to play the Miami Dolphins. He has the 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 pleasure of playing the Miami Dolphins. He's got you mean the, the winning streak. Miami Dolphins. The that's true. The longest, longest the longest winning streak currently in the AFC East. He's got the rushing floor, and this is a plus matchups for uh, for two of his wide receivers. And last year in two games versus Miami in rushing or er, f- Josh Allen's rushing nine for one thirty five, nine for ninety five and two. He just he's been taking over. There was a it's a little narrative esque. But there was the report this week of uh, of the of Josh Allen talking with his coach and essentially be, being r- really given that green light of saying, "Okay, Josh Allen, go go win the game. You you're making the decisions, man. You make it happen." All right, so you're going Josh Allen, Jason. Yeah. I am doing it with Jameis <laughs> Winston. It's always scary. <laughs> it's always it's always uh, a rough sled to put him in your lineup. You can end up with a terrible game. And when you look at the Saints, they are dead middle, as we say. As, as, you, as, say, as you say. As I say against quarterback, they are 16th. And if you look deeper, you go, well, they had they really sucked the first three weeks of the season. But they've been solid. They have not been bad against quarterback lately. So why would we play Jameis against a team that's been pretty solid against quarterback? You, why would you play Jameis? Why would we? And the reason is because... Marshawn Lattimore, who shut down pretty much everyone he's played against as a shadow corner, including, including, Mike, including Evans. Mike Evans, has a hamstring issue that is almost certainly going to make him miss this week. And if Marshawn Lattimore is out, I think Jameis has a great game because you know that the Saints are wanting to make amends for last week and just torch the earth against Tampa Bay. Jameis will have to throw, and if he's got Mike Evans – on one of their other two sucky cornerbacks, and Chris Godwin ate against them last time around. I think I think you know Jameis is a great play. All right, I'm going to go with send in the car, send in the car. Yes, Derek Carr against the Cincinnati Bengals, and regardless of whether the Oakland Raiders are able to turn this into a blowout, they will need Derek Carr to get them there. Cincinnati has given up 
top 10 fantasy performances to the quarterback in four of their last five games. The Raiders are at home. They are rolling. He's been playing well. And believe it or not, he's been a top 12 guy two of the last three weeks. Here's what's fantastic. The... Oakland Raiders have allowed 12 sacks on the year. Like that's the second best rate. So the, I mean, the league average is about 24. Has Cincinnati sacked anybody this year? They, Cinc- Cincinnati has the lowest total sacks in the league at at zero, t- ten <laughs> at t- at ten. And so it's those were trips. Like those I mean, are the quarterback fall. You know, the the offensive lineman stepped on the quarterback. He fell down. We got one <laughs> like this. This is a great matchup for Derek Carr to just get it done. And that includes I, – I didn't make him my start. But, ladies and gentlemen, we've been very sad with the Walrus. Lately. Oh, man. But Wait, are you – Yes. You, you, you're right, you want it? Yes. You willing? It, yes. Oh, that was intense. There's, again, this past weekend, we learned that he was open on every play. Every, yeah, oh, every time oh, Mike right. watches I have even, games, I've even, reviewed the film. Even he, great plays that result oh, in yeah. a fifty-yard touchdown. Touchdown is like, but, but Darren was open. Yeah, but when they do those plays, I'm just I'm I look. I am. He's writing a letter. No, no, I'm running the jump, I'm running the Gruden. next gen stats like in real time in my head on uh-huh. like yeah. a computer. You have proof. And look, look, the probability of those plays. Sure, they worked. <laughs> but the probability of Darren Waller catching it is 95%. All right, all right. Let's go running backs, Mike. Oh, Nelly. Please be true. I am kind of taking a shot here. I believe Matt Burrito will be out. I'm with Andy. This He's projected to miss one to two weeks, even with his like half Wolverine powers. We joke about it. He's uh, he's going to miss the game. Yes. Well, he, he hasn't been ruled out, I, but I... I strongly believe Matt Burita misses the game. Raheem Mostert, he might just be sitting there on your waiver wire right now. They get the rematch against Arizona, but this time San Francisco is at home. Coleman banged up. It was all Mostert in that overtime. He's got the three-down skill set. He can catch the ball. Arizona's giving up the eighth most points against fantasy running backs. Mostert always delivers when he is given the opportunity, and I think he's got a huge opportunity here. I agree with you. Uh, I I think he showed up with a bit of a limited designation. Ah, come on, so man. You, you do need to keep your eyes peeled, but I think it's a very – like fab dollars weren't spent on Raheem Mostert. Right. But he may be just as valuable as my start of the week, Brian Hill. Brian Hill was the most added player this past week. and for The good, $50 man. Yes, for good reason. Uh, Carolina has given up the most running back fantasy points over the last month. Last week, like I said, even with Freeman a- active for a portion of that game, getting 30 plus percent of snaps, he had a very productive volume type of game. No Hooper, no Sanu. He can get some passing game work. So for me, he's a very confident RB two play this week against Carolina. You just are going to have to use Brian Hill. And for me, my start of the week is Joe Mixon, a guy who had a great game last week, 30 for 114, going He's to play. so happy to be in this segment. I know. Well, he's uh, – I mean, fantasy owners still don't know what to do with him because if you've had Mixon, you've felt all of the starts that sucked. And so you don't know if you can buy into this. But with the transition at quarterback, they said, Joe Mixon, you're – they were down – two scores and two and a half scores, and they're like, we're just giving it to Mixon over and over and over. That was their best chance to win. Coach, shouldn't we try to win? <laughs> just give it to Mixon. Um, My, it, the, 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 pardon me. 48 to 10 was the score, and they kicked a field goal to get to 48 to 13. I just want <laughs> that to hit you. That's called lose by less. I mean, they could barely less. Well, do you could, know how embarrassing it is to lose when you only have ten points? It's they la- in the coaching meetings. Oh my goodness! They saved face. Yes, they re- I mean, they went in and were like, "We got thirteen. Oh gosh, Sorry. guys, that's almost two full touchdowns. I just almost. can't believe. Maybe that. we maybe we missed an extra point. You don't know. <laughs> maybe you didn't watch the game. But the reality is, history won't remember. Joe Mixon is the centerpiece of this putrid offense. But against the Raiders, 
They're you, they're not a tough matchup. I think that Mixon can have a really solid game, and if you've got him on your roster, I think you should be starting him this week. All right, and by the way, if you're curious about the Breeder Report, I believe it came from Ian Rappaport. There's a second opinion he's going to pursue on his ankle, and so Rappaport's the one that Oof, reported that, he will miss a week or two. What if that one comes back three to four? What if it comes back, you're fine. Right. No, I'm not. That's Jason. Jason's not willing. I am not convinced. Until he doesn't see him on the field. That he is out because there's been so many times where he appears like he's going to miss practices, miss the game, and then he's, and then he's back. It's not as often as has been reported, it though. feels that way. It does feel that way. All right, Mike, what do you got at wide receiver? I talked about him earlier, but it's Terry McLaurin. Yes, this is scary, as they would say, but the matchup is so great. The look, They've been torched. here, And we talked about the Jets. You know, they're giving up points. Here's the last three uh, quarterbacks that they have faced. Gardner Minshew. Ryan Fitzpatrick, and Daniel Jones. These three guys lit up the New York Jets, so that can at least wash away some of your Dwayne Haskins fear. Not all of it. It will be impossible to remove all that fear until you see Haskins actually do it. But the Jets, fourth against fantasy wide receivers. It's at home. I believe in Terry McLaurin's talent. I believe that Haskins has a good enough game that you're happy you started Terry. All right. I'm going to go DJ Moore. He's on fire right now. He's yes. been a uh, top 20 receiver in four or five weeks. Here's his targets. Jason alluded to it earlier. 10, 9, 10, 11. Beautiful. It's wonderful. And like I said, Vegas is not buying this Atlanta defense. It's rejuvenated. It's got a 49.5 point over under in this game. Atlanta's given up the eighth most points to uh, fantasy wide receivers. And you know what? He's done those top 20 performances, all of them, with no touchdowns. None. So he's been putting up big weeks, and he's due to get into the end zone. And that would turn a good week into a great week. So I think that's what you're going to get, a great week from DJ Moore. For me, I am going to Hollywood. <laughs> I'm going to Baltimore because I'm going with Marquis Hollywood <laughs> Brown, Baltimore rookie sensation. Uh, this is just so much fun to make him my start of the week because he's a guy I loved in college when I was scouting Baker. I was like, who is that guy? And he's a huge player. I mean, you Baker's, want to talk about – Baker says, where, where is that guy? Can I have him back? Um, he is really electric. This is a guy where y you can end up with the wide receiver one on a week because he can go off for a couple of big bomb touchdowns. And in this matchup that I talked about earlier where I want pieces in it, I expect them to hit the over. I, I think this is going to be a high-scoring game against the Texans who four of the last five weeks have given up seventh or better on weekly fantasy points given up to wide receivers. So it's a, it's a plus matchup with a an electric player. Uh, I don't want to end up with a 28-point, 32-point, fantasy player on my bench and uh, you know I think that's his upside in in this matchup all right tight end Mike I'm going with Eric Ebron and this is the the squeaky wheel has squeaked his way into my head it's this is not the matchup I am chasing which is normally what we go look for for the tight end start of the week but he had a closed door meeting with his coach and that turned into 12 targets he flipped the tables. It's usually Jack Doyle as the guy who's getting the more snaps, more targets, and it turned into Eric Ebron. We're not expecting T.Y. Hilton back this week. Paris Campbell is still out. Jacksonville has good DBs. And with Jacoby Brissett back, I expect targets to be funneled once again to Eric Ebron. So I think he's in that range where he's he's above a streamer now, and he's a, a low-end start every week. All right. Look, when I'm staring at the bottom of the barrel at tight end, I've decided I'm going to chase the touchdown trends, and that means Kyle Rudolph. At the beginning of the week... It's the holiday season. He's, mm. he's the red zone reindeer. Do -do -do. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> no Thielen. What are you singing? You know, the, oh, it's the holiday season. I yeah, said, you yeah. sounded you like you literally were, said it's the holiday season. It sounded like you were singing the Grinch for a second. I was like, What? Well, he could end up in the Grinch category, no <laughs> Rudolph, doubt about yeah. it. Rudolph is touchdown dependent entirely. But when I started looking at 
yes, Eifer could have a nice game, right? The weapons, they don't have a lot in the passing game, and last week he scored with Ryan Finley. But I'm going to put it on the arm of Kirk Cousins over Ryan Finley this week for my start of the week. He's got four touchdowns in the last five weeks. You're going to get five targets. You've got a competent quarterback in Kirk Cousins, and he's been a top 12 tight end three or four weeks. So you're not going to get yards, but Denver's actually giving up five-plus catches to the tight end position in each of the last four weeks. So you could do a lot worse than Kyle Rudolph, which yeah. is not something you could say early in the year. Right. Um, for my tight end start of the week, I'm going with Jared Cook. I want a guy yeah, who's got an great. opportunity for uh, – last week, 10 targets from Drew Brees, 6 for 74. The, the, they need a big rebound. The Tampa Bay defense is as close to the Arizona Cardinals as far as giving up big points to the tight end position. So I, I think it's just one of those things where you've got a high-scoring team, a great plus matchup, and last week the targets were there for him. I expect – as he's, you know, he's new to the team this year – more integrated into the offense, finally up over 70% of snap counts last week. Cook is the guy I would look for this week off of waivers. If you remember the Arizona game, Tampa was one uh, drop from giving up a 40-something yard touchdown to Max Williams in that mm. game as well. So they're very vulnerable to the, tie, <laughs> to the tight end position. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Oh, it's love at first sight. The first time I saw her, I knew I had to have the Dallas kicker, Brett Maher. <laughs> Sorry, Brett. I think you. I think you called Brett a girl. I did, I had to. You rhyme Maher. We were almost gonna do something like I'm going on a dance with my I daughter. Like, like with this, my daughter. This Friday, I'm real excited to go to the dance with my daughter. So start. So how do you tie the that? Cowboys. In? And then on Sunday, I'm gonna dance with Brett Maher. Sometimes your rhymes are oh so awkward. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> we're just getting worse and worse. Oh, Brett. that's okay. Nice try. I Thank like you. that you you stuck to the kicker you needed not just the rhyme yeah I and like that's Brett the Marther. real key and you can arthur arthur <laughs> bread martha oh uh, we want to thank our studio sponsor pristine auction a james connor signed pittsburgh steelers logo football 61 dollars 42 cents yesterday use our code ballers when you head over to pristine auction.com browse amazing gifts it's christmas time it's the holiday season Doo -doo. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So get yourself, get yourself an amazing piece of uh, sports memorabilia from pristineauction.com. <laughs> That's why it was confusing because you said doo doop dee doo. That's not the words. -da -ba -da -ba I wasn't doing the words. I was playing the music. Thank you, Booklet. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy Goodbye. the football tonight. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.